Well, hello there, my Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Signs. Welcome to your What Do I Need read for this full moon to new moon, December 2019. I am your reader for the moment, uh, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short, Virgo Sun, <laughs> president of Drawing the Circle Productions, professional which professional, intuitive, and very, very honored to serve you today. Uh, if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe, making my way up to 1,000 subscribers so I can do super live chat, and eventually, uh, once a month, I'll do Drunk Tarot, see how that works out. I'm going to do a clarifying video probably after this. I wanted to get my three reads done for the day, and then you know, I have some creative time left over, and it's creative energy. thought I'd do that. You know, We'll clarify what Drunk Tarot is, because can't really talk about it in every single vid. <laughs> it gets a little boring for me and for you as well. Particularly my returning subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. Getting there, right? A couple of things before we dive in. Uh, this is a general read, so please do check your other signs if this one doesn't click for you, right? You've got Virgo in your uh, placement somewhere, so uh, planet somewhere, so you know, we can overanalyze. If it's not your reading, really go by what happens in your body as you pay attention and breathe, right? As you're listening. Uh, if it's sort of like, meh, like it's interesting and I'd like that, but not feeling it, it's just not your read. That's okay. You know, as, as a reader, we particularly reading uh, quantum threads of zodiacal collectives. It's a very expensive phrase right there, isn't it? Uh, you know, you, you're reading hundreds of thousands of people at any one given point, so it's just not yours for today. That's why I always do at least sun, moon, rising signs, so that you can check your other signs, other planetary placements, etc. Right? Uh, what else? What else? This is a what do I need read? Sort of like every day how you could pick an oracle card or a tarot card. What is my card of the day? Which is lovely. I've done it thousands and thousands of times myself. It's a little bit different in the sense that it's really asking the divine through a divination, divination system, what do I need? What do I need today? What do I need to know? What do I need to look at? What do I need to heal? What do I need to work on? It really can run in any direction. So what we're going to do is pose that very question to the divine using five different decks, one card from each. So, you know, a relatively short read, about 20 minutes or so usually, just to get you some information from the divine mind, heart, soul of the collective of all that is, if you really want to go there. Uh, in this case, the collective pantheons of angels, gods, goddesses, masters, and the higher souls of all involved, which are just the crew that I work with uh, in, uh, as a reader and as a teacher and a spiritual counselor. Um, so you get some of that information, totally up to you what you want to deal with it, uh, do with it. Please remember to breathe as we do this. Breathing not only brings you right into the present moment, which is where you really want to be for any kind of reading or spiritual exchange, but also you are breathing in the same air that I am symbolically speaking, that it is the breath that carries the spirit, right, that as I inhale, I'm breathing in the guidance, the grace, the chi, the prana, the reiki, whatever you want to call it, translating it through clairvoyance and uh, empathy, I'm a clairvoyant empath, into words, right? And through the, the systems to communicate, right? So I'm breathing in and breathing out. You breathe in that grace for yourself. You're breathing the same chi and prana that I am, right? In, in that moment. So it'll give you a deeper understanding a deeper experience, as well as breathing in those blessings for self, breathing out those blessings for all of life. Just a really good idea. All the cards, uh, the decks that I'm reading are in the description box below. Uh, my book, uh, my ebook, Words of Grace from a Professional Witch, has been out for a year or will be at Yule, so I just marked down the price, 10 bucks. So I went from $24.95 to $14.95 if you want to go check it out. The reviews are really good. Just go to my website, read the review page, because the reviews are really, really good. Very, very helpful book. Very transformative for me. I was finishing it up this time last year, so glad to uh, drop the price on that so that others can um, benefit from it. Cool, cool. I think that's about it. Let's do this. Please breathe, my Virgo brothers and sisters. Nice, big, long bucket size <laughs> breaths. Oh, so lovely. 
here we go. My collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved, including my own. Please, one card in clarity. Oh, we'll take this one. You drop it in my hand for this Virgo collective. Sun, moon, rising sign from this full moon to new moon next. What do they... Uh, oh, so what is the archetype we need to look at? The rebel. <laughs> the rebel archetype in its light and in its shadow. Now, we will talk about this. Uh, the, the rebel family is... Uh, uh, the rebel archetype is part of the action family of archetypes. It's either the action family or the... Uh, the wild card, I have a feeling, though, it is uh, the action family, because rebels usually have to take some sort of action, right? Uh, archetypes are essentially verbs, right? So to rebel, right? The, the rebel. But we will get to that once I have the other four cards on the table, because it's too easy to interpret. And with my knowledge of, about uh, Jungian psychology and archetypal dynamics, and I could spend an hour with that one card. So this frames it a little bit more. Uh, so that we get to kind of see what story you're uh, tuned into here, what I'm tuned into here, and whether or not it's your story. So to do that, we're going to clarify with the angels. So please breathe. The, well, the angels always give that broader arc, right? That, that uh, like, one or two words to clarify. It is, it is that bigger picture, what do they call painting in broad strokes rather than in detail. So let's do that now. Please breathe. Little coffee, coffee. I got Wonder Mug. Mmm, so good. Mmm, heavenly. Speaking of which, my angels, please one card in clarity for this Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising sign. What do they need uh, for this full moon to new moon next December 2019? They've got the rebel archetype with truth and integrity. Cannot tell you how important truth and integrity is to everyone, to every sign, but particularly if you are a Virgo who is service-based, a thinker, and dealing with rebellion, that here's the thing about being a Virgo. We're going to keep going, but this is what they're putting an exclamation point on for me for the moment, that um, sixth house is a uh, healing an occupation, right? Health and occupation. That's our Virgo thing. It's sixth house. So if you think of what we're occupied with affects our health, that totally makes sense, right? I've been saying it for decades that uh, crackheads are occupied with crack. No tea, no shade, no pink lemonade. They just are, right? So that's going to affect their health. Occupation is not just about what you do for a living. However, if you are occupied with anything other than your truth and integrity, it's really gonna screw with your health. Liars don't heal. You are as sick as your secrets, liars don't heal. It's just the truth. And as Virgos, I don't know about you, but I can't get away with it anymore. I cannot get away with lying or deception in any way, shape, or form. I knocked it off a while ago, but now like even white lies don't work. Part of that is, is I incarnated uh, in a time, uh, particularly growing up through the 80s, where the narcissism was just so out of control, where the lies and the deception and the greed just deadly sin free for all, uh, that it, people were just so occupied with g getting for themselves that I learned. I just learned the hard way. I had my nose rubbed into it. It's like liars don't heal. They just get worse. So that doesn't mean that, you know, someone is born a liar, but they are choices and decisions that we make that, of course, then you have to be occupied with maintaining the lie after lie after lie. And what does that do to your integrity? Integrity is about wholeness, W-H-O-L-E-N-E-S-S. -S. Like, uh, I'm, I'm going to make some hard boiled eggs later, right? It's like before I boil that egg, I want to check, make sure the shell isn't cracked, that it's in its full integrity. So think of every lie, every deception as a crack in your egg that is going to take what? Time to heal. So our lives move at the speed of truth, you could say, in that way. So just be aware of that. I'm not saying that you're the liar. I'm not saying you're not the one in integrity. You're the rebel. So it depends on what you are rebelling against, legitimate or illegitimate, or illegitimate power authority. 
Because if you've noticed, it's like the gods and the angels and the masters have turned a bunce, turned on a Bunsen burner under the planet, and all the lies and the deceits and the shadow behaviors are just boiling to the surface and being skimmed off the top, right? But that's the healing process, you know? And it's it's not even like the soul wants to heal, it's the the demons of pain inside of us we get possessed by pain the only reason anyone ever lies or is untruthful or omits the truth everybody forgets about the sin of omission that's why you're not exactly lying but you're not exactly telling the truth either you're like oh no right you hope they just will, will stop talking so you don't you know it's it's it the the wound ultimately goes to the one who's lying right the, the one who's lied to will take on their own process right of really understanding how important the truth is, and we've all been lied to. Nobody, nobody gets to this life without being lied to. Cool. So let's ask the gods and the goddesses, daughters of the moon, Terra. Oh, by the way, this is a healing with the angels oracle. I keep forgetting to do that. I'm going to give Doreen more props. Doreen Virtue. Please breathe. Oh, my gods and my goddesses, please. One card in clarity for this Virgo collective. Sun, moon. Rising sign for this full moon to new moon next, please. What do they need? What do they need? It's waning moon. What do they need to, to wane, to let go of? What do they need to be aware of? Daughters of the Moon Tarot, Fiona Morgan, please. One card in clarity. We've got the rebel archetype with truth and integrity, and we add to that the card of the emperor, the card of Pan. Also the card of the Hierophant. I think we're still talking divine masculine energy here. So that thing of control, that thing of leadership, the emperor is the amalgamation of or all the four elemental kings. So uh, the, the king of swords, the king of wands, the king of cups, the king of pentacles, all together in the emperor. And this is about taking action. So I'm really going to back this up by saying that the rebel archetype, at least in this spread is coming from the action family, that there's something about taking control of a situation here, making a plan. Now remember, an emperor doesn't necessarily go out to war. The emperor commands the kings of the different kingdoms to unite, join together to follow their lead. That's why often seen as here in the top of the mountains, sort of, here's the word, dictating, right? But that doesn't mean... Well, look at the word dictation, right? What is when someone takes dictation, you talk, somebody else writes it down, but then that can lead to someone being a dictator, and there has never been, in my opinion, such a thing as a positive, loving dictator. No, you call that leadership. So be careful of that which you are rebelling against, Virgo, that you do not become the very thing that you rebel against, like banana republics, right? Uh, one is overthrown, and then the ones who overthrow it become the power, and then they get overthrown, and around and around and around it goes. Banana Republic, more than just a fashion line. Does Banana Republic still exist? I don't know. I'm wearing Ralph Lauren. Isn't that right, Ralph? Just me and Ralph here today. Um... Let's ask the masters about this, because really I want to get back into that rebel archetype in a way that is the main uh, soul dynamic that you need to look at here. We both do, that we're going to be rebelling against some kind of authority, either legitimate or illegitimate, but we're going to have to really be true to ourselves with that card of truth and integrity from the angels. In fact, even to ask the angels, well, what is the truth? Show me the truth. What do I need about the truth? That can be an ongoing thing. Yeah, you might want to say this to your watch later. This one feels a little bit more important, not than the other readings, but there's a quality here because as Virgos, we can overthink things and process things in such a healthy way. But if we're processing something that we believe to be the truth, but isn't, yeah, it's sort of like downloading something with a virus in it. It, it just screws up the system. So let's ask the Ascended Masters, my masters, please. Oh, my beautiful, beautiful Ascended Masters, please, one card in clarity from the Chuck Spizzano love pack, baby, love pack, love, baby. That's where it's at. Bang, bang, bang on the door, baby. Talk a little louder, sugar. <laughs> All right, please, one card, my Ascended Masters, for this Virgo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising sign. What do we need? Uh, this full moon to new moon next. Hmm. 
naughtiness. I love this card. And I think with Virgo, we've gotten this a few times. Either that or Pisces, because I'm a Pisces moon. I tend to remember those. Naughty, very coward, uh, courage, the cowardly dog. Naughty. Um, interestingly enough, a card of the suit of luck, right? It's not a problem card. It's a luck card. So it's that lucky feeling that things that could turn on a dime that you get to be a little naughty. Now, again, with that rebel, that feels lovely that this can very much be about rebelling against uh, illegitimate authority, sort of getting away with something, sort of doing it a little bit on the sly. Usually this has a sexual romantic connotation here, but I don't necessarily feel that in this one. And by the way, this is not a relationship-based read, otherwise I would have put um, uh, Venus uh, in, in uh, the, the, so it would have been Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and, and it's not. So that could be a number of different things here, but at least that naughtiness, right, and, and considering the other cards it could have been, uh, that that's fun, right? There's like a little bit of fun there, and, and it's like sort of getting away with it, doing what you know you shouldn't be doing, but it's okay. <laughs> like, for just this time, it's okay, right? Let's uh, get a uh, Whispers of Love Oracle card from the higher selves of all involved. So please, 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 oh please, oh please, oh please. Yeah, remember with that truth and integrity thing there, it's like that naughtiness, you'll know. It's like your energy system, your chakra system will go, yeah, I know, probably not, but it's okay. We're going to do this this one time. We're going to get a little naughty. We're going to, you know, like, oh, it's sort of fun. Feels that. I feel that in my second chakra. And it's not necessarily sexual, you know. It's not that sexy kind of naughty. Naughty. You know, like that. Let's ask the higher selves here, please. Breathe. My Virgos, breathe with me. Oh, that's so lovely. The higher selves of all involved, mine included. Sixth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth dimension and above. Please, one card in clarity, a whisper of love for this Virgo collective. Sun, moon, rising sign. What do we need for this full moon to new moon? Next, considering new moon is going to be the 26th, which means the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th is Dark Moon. So we're going to be going through those three pivotal Christmas holidays in Dark Moon. So please, a, a true whisper of love from the higher selves for this Virgo collective. Choose love. You always have a choice as to what you should do, which does indicate uh, with this rebel archetype a choice of some kind and to choose love. That's good. We can work with this. This is all very workable. I need a sip of coffee. Mm. Wonder Java. So I'm going to read, um, you know, first card down, but now let me read it so you get the definitions. Now you can analyze and interpret an archetype forever. So this is just sort of a jumping off point, but it's about getting the flavor. So the shadow or the lead attribute uh, rejects legitimate authority out of anger, rebels out of peer pressure or fashion. So Obviously, that, that is the toxic rebel, right? It's like rebelling against legitimate authority. Well, what's a legitimate authority? Like driving on the correct side of the road. Uh, what is legitimate authority? Spiritually, that would be being kind to people, right? We just fuck them all, right? It's like the ego really taking over. Uh, natural constraints or rebelling out of peer pressure. Uh, oftentimes, we are in relationships, particularly codependent relationships where we rebel against what's healthy. And I think with that truth and integrity card, there's a touch of that here, where even rebelling against your own gut, your own soul, your own, not consciousness, your own conscience, right? Like the Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder, right? The, the, your conscience, like you know better. That's the voice of grace saying, what are you doing? You, you are at a crossroads right now. Pay attention. What you do now will have consequences, right? The light attribute uh, of the rebel challenges authority to affect social change, right? Very second wave, very divine masculine, uh, rejects spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. So if you keep that in mind and then add to it truth and integrity, that you may very well have to rebel against an entire system, against a relationship, against a person that really no longer serves your growth or 
because we've got that card of the emperor here about some aspect of your own self, your own way of doing things, something that perhaps you had institutionalized in your life or has become such a pattern of this is the way we do it and this is the way it is, realizing that even though you had invested great time, perhaps money, emotion, will, choices, uh, investment, 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 that it no longer serves you and you must rebel. Particularly in family systems and tribal systems, this happens. We're brought up with a certain way of thinking. We grow, we evolve, and eventually we realize that that is not authentic to the truth, to the truth of who we are, that it is not in our integrity. And keep an eye on your solar plexus. Look, Virgo, we're ruled by, ruled by the intestines, which is more second chakra. But if you have consistent, like, heartburn, right, uh, uh, a lot of uh, solar plexus, stomach issues, acid stomach, stuff like that, acid reflux, that's usually because there's something going on in your honor code. What is your set of personal boundaries? The, the voice, uh, the sacred truth of the solar plexus is honor thyself. Go read Anatomy of the Spirit by Caroline Mace or go read my book, Words of Grace. It's in there, too. Honor thyself. So you're going, it might be that you're going against your truth. You're going against your gut. You're going against your honor code of what's right for you. Now, when do we tend to compromise that? In codependent relationships. And I just learned this one. We make sure I get the words right. Only I have to feel good about my choices. Only I have to feel good about my choices. That's how you break codependence. That's the mantra. Only I have to feel good about my choices. So if I'm being peer pressured into do something or if I have to stay in the relationship and I have to choose this toxicity, no, 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 no. Time to rebel. Otherwise, you are gonna watch your health deteriorate, right? If you have to lie, if you have to deceive, if you have to go against your soul's integrity, the price will always be paid by the liar, by the deceiver, even though it will destroy people, places, and things around them. Be very careful. This is a very powerful waning moon we are going into here, um, particularly because it's right at the end of the year. We will be crossing Yuletide, so really this... <laughs> It's the darkest time of the year until Yule, the sun reboots, right? We'll get a, a minute a day brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. So this is, in a way, the darkest part of the year for us, where we're supposed to be letting things die and transform. Now, your saving grace here, if I can use that word, is this card of naughtiness. You might need to be a little sneaky. You might need, sort of like, can you imagine somebody stealing their life back from a situation? They might have to kind of do it a little covert right? That if you have to extricate yourself from something toxic that no longer serves your growth, it's okay. See what I mean? It's like that's, you get to be a little naughty. If that's the only way out that you can get out without being abused, neglected, codependent, uh, really in any way, shape, or form, do it, right? So look, here, here's what I can tell you. I've been in so many abusive relationships in my life, which is why I'm really good at relationships. It is the pain. If you stop avoiding the pain and actually <laughs> Feel the emotional pain and let it transform you. Let life transform you into the person you were born to be because that's what it's set up to do. Everything in this quantum hologram is happening for us to be the best that we can be. Everything's here to help. Just It sucks a lot of the time. Then you can really get, it's like, okay, this is making me better somehow. But the moment you realize you are being abused or neglected overtly, covertly, codependent upon, Pick up your bed and walk. Pick up your bed and walk. Go anywhere else than where you are. Because the reason why that is healing, not just for you, but for everyone involved, including the person you who is codependent upon you or you are codependent upon, is that it moves it towards healing for everybody. As one of us heals, all of us heal. And then you're one less person that they have to deal with that they have abused. Especially because what do we got here? Choose love. You always have a choice as to what you should do, and that is the truth. It is your choice. That is what the truth. But are you going to choose according into your integrity what you will rebel against and say no more, no more, never again, which is really the word of the victory archetype. Victor, never again the burning times. Never again will I allow someone to do this to me again. And remember, with this card of the emperor here, you get to be your own emperor then and no longer suffer under the dictate of something toxic, but you get to deal with it in a naughty way. 
um, particularly if it is systemic, if it is tribal, if there are a lot of people involved, you do get to steal away in the night. Sort of like I'm getting an image of somebody who is in a, and this is, I don't know if this is in the collective, probably somewhere, but I imagine um, somebody who is being physically, emotionally abused uh, drained, stolen from in a relationship, and they finally catch on, but they know if they say anything that it's going to get worse, so they have to kind of steal their lives away. T ancient fucking story, by the way, right? Ancient, going back centuries, if not millennia, in human experience of people stealing their lives away in the middle of the night. I've done it with jobs, I've done it in relationships. Thankfully, I've always had access to a car and my own place to live. And if not, I have couch surfed uh, to get away from toxicity like that. We all have to. It is a test. It is uh, certainly Dark Knight of the Soul adjacent. But with that card of the rebel there, my Virgos, this is about your healing, your truth, your integrity, that you really have the opportunity here to change what you have to change. And keep in mind, people will say, well, I don't want to do it during the holidays. It's like, then that's what you're prostituting yourself for. That's what you're negotiating away, right? Now, you may come to this, you might realize, and by the way, this isn't necessarily a, a relationship with a family member or a lover or anything like that. It can be about your job. It can be about any situation where there is something really challenging, your truth and integrity, your soul is saying, choose love, love us. Love self, that child inside of your heart is being abused. Really, the inner child is your heart chakra. If it's being abused or neglected, codependent upon, stolen from, lied, deceived, lied to, deceived, you, you're here to guard that child. Give it the love that only you can give it. Seriously, like no shit, because it has the keys to your success. It is your innocence and enough of letting other people pee on our innocence. Unless you're into that kind of thing. I'm not. I'm a Virgo. Cool, cool. What an intense but very, very fast read, my Virgos. Just how we like it. Fast and intense. Done. Done. On to the next one. Done. I'm done. And I'm on to the next. Uh, may the Virgo collective, sun, moon, rising signs, be blessed with all that they need this full moon to new moon. Next, may we all be blessed uh, for the well-being of all that we may all grow, heal, be the best that we can be, fulfill our role in the divine plan with truth and integrity as we rebel against that which is toxic and no longer serves the divine plan. And so it is. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. Check your other vids. And by all means, happy holidays, blessed full moon, <laughs> through a new moon, hail, farewell, and blessed be.